Okay, uh, thank you for your reminder. Okay, uh, my name is Tantawi. I will act as the uh, master ceremony and the moderator of the session. And we have uh, Mr. Ganchar as our department uh, head of uh, this department. So uh, before further ado, I invite Mr. Ganchar. Uh, are you ready, uh, Dr. Ganchar? Okay, thank you, okay, Pak uh, Tantawi. Please. Alhamdulillah, so we can meet each other, uh, even that we doing it uh, from Zoom link. May uh, me Leng Oi, thank you for become our guest lecturer in this event. Uh, it's very interesting topic that you uh, share to our student. And uh, because right now, uh, we are dealing with uh, something that important, especially when we uh, when we are a leader, when we are become a leader, uh, to have problem solving. Uh, that each of organization must have a problem. So I think something that will be shared uh, with uh, our guest lecture is Meleng Oi. It's very interesting because. This is uh, tools for us to help the leader, to help the manager, uh, how to solve the problem. So again, thank you for become our guest lecturing, uh, Miss, Mrs. Uh, May Leng Oi. Uh, hopefully that it's not uh, the last time and the last thing that we can collaborate uh, because we want to make uh, uh, the other collaboration with your institution. Uh, beside that, uh, this guest lecturing, we want to be maybe conducting joint research, join uh, 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 a joint seminar, joint research, and so on and so on. So we open for discussion. We are very open for uh, sharing because uh, as a part of international institution, we have to make our student having uh, international exposure. So for our student, please enjoy discussion with our guest lecturing, uh, especially in this day, we have two guest lecturing from uh, what we can say, uh, to, uh, Tunku Abdul Rahman. Tunku Abdul Rahman. Right. <laughs> uh, I already have uh, missed to spelling the, apa, the, the uh, uh, because in Malaysia there is Utar and there is Taruk. So uh, Tunku Abdul Rahman University is uh, apa, is a good place also to discuss about uh, management. So oh you. I, I think you have problem with your uh, Zoom link, Miss, Mrs. May Ling Oi? Yeah, yeah. I, I, oh. think, I think internet was cut off just now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah, so yeah. welcome to our Zoom link again. <laughs> Thank you okay. to be part of guest lecturing. And for student, please enjoy discussion about uh, how we can problems uh, make problem solving with trees the theory of inventive uh, problem solving. And after this, with uh, Mrs. Mei Ling Oi, we will find the other discussion about how to manage uh, about service quality. And this is important issues also in the management area, because as a manager, we have to manage our service, uh, uh, become a service excellence. So, uh, during this two, two, apa, two hours, let's enjoy. We have two uh, very, very interesting topic with uh, Mrs. Mei Ling Oi and Dr. Kanes Kopal. Barakallah for us. Thank you for Pak Tantowi for being our moderator. Thank and you, hopefully, Dr. Mrs. Mei Ling Oi. Please, uh, so you can start maybe recording we can already, right? do another collaboration in the future. 
Yes, started recording, right, Dr. Kancha? Yes. It's recording Please. started now? Yeah, yes. it's already. It's already started. Started. Okay. 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 So, good afternoon, eh? uh, Dr. Gancha, uh, uh, Mr. Shamshuddin, and fellow students yeah, in Indonesia. And I'm not sure whether Malaysian students join or not. Right? And um, so, today, I would like to share the greatest reason in the world to know why is trees is, is important for us to learn. Eh? So what is trees? Trees, the meaning is actually a uh, um, short form for Russian language, which I could not pronounce the language, but in English, it means theory of inventive problem solving. Okay. And you could see that uh, I'm, I came from Ta University College. And I also put a name here because I'm also a member of Malaysian Trees Association. By end of the talk, uh, I will let you know that trees is going to Indonesia, which you guys will meet uh, some fellow trees, you know, in other UC as well. They're organizing some activity. Maybe you guys can join them for some, you know, some uh, advice whether you guys will learn further for the lecturer and the students. Okay, so today what I share will be very basic, right? So let us look at the word involved, inventive. So, so I put in, let me put in my wording out first. Yeah, because, uh, so here I would like to look at the word inventive. So three question, what does inventive mean in trees? What is an inventive problem? What is a normal problem? Let us look at the scenario here. Let me put in all first. Okay. So here you could see that Assuming yeah, we have a table, right? Uh, we need to put 1,000 kilo load on the table. But the problem is this table is a plastic table. The legs are not strong enough to put this 1,000 kilo of load. So what's the solution? For normal problem, we say, oh, never mind, solve the problem. Just change the plastic leg to metal legs. Problem solved. This is called normal problem. Now, what happened if you need to move the table? If it's a metal table, it is too heavy, right? For you to bring from one room to another room. So it's too heavy. So now this become inventive problem, right? Which means the table is strong. It can carry the load of 1000 kilo, but you, you need six people to carry heavy table, metal table to another room. So let's look at the solution. Compromise strategy. Now, if you change the leg diameter, you reduce the head, you can reduce the head count. Why? Because then the metal of, let's say, 20 cm, you can reduce it maybe to 5 cm, right? So if you vary the, uh, the metal leg, so, which means then perhaps you can, you need less people to carry now. You can put in, uh, you can carry the, the table, can put in one kilo load and four people carry. But then what happened if you have, my screen, uh, a bit problem here. I'm not sure how to hide it. Is it hide it? How to hide the screen? Uh? I'm not sure. Her. Yeah. Uh, so, it's normal, Professor. It's, so it's a, I'm blocking my screen a bit. Yeah? Mm, I have to put in some, oh, okay, I'm pop. Okay, so so now, um, so which mean you see now, if what happened uh, now you have, you need to put on the table now 2,000 2, kilo load. So what happened now? You cannot have less people. So now the system break down. If you have double the capacity, but you, you, you only have half resources, your employee only two people, then you have problem here. So now how to solve this problem? What are potential solution to this problem then? Right? So now if you look at the compromise strategy, it has limitation. Why we say so? Because um, um, we, are, we want an ideal situation. We want a strong table. We want a light table, right? And, um, but you know, so we are now using trees. We want to solve this inventive problem by solving the contradiction, right? If the table legs are made metal, then strength of the table improve 
but the weight of the table worsened. Okay, so this is a situation if you use the compromise. So you want to using trees to solve the problem, right? Using inventive solution for this, yeah. So, so then therefore we put an arrow here to say that oh the table now although it becomes stronger using metal from plastic to table to metal, but the weight now become worsen, right? So you want to solve this now how, right? Because you want to put more load and yet you want, you know, less people to carry. So trees, let's start with the history of trees first, yeah, before we talk about the solution. Trees is a Russian acronym. Uh, we already know the meaning. It stands for Theory of Inventive Problem Solving, right? And this is the person, Genrif Ashula, Way back 1946 to 1960, uh, 1985, he found he found very very uh, troublesome because out there there's a lot of problems solved, but there's no compilation of problem. So what he did was he and his colleague compiled, he studied yeah, patterns of problems. Yeah? He compiled all the patterns of problem and the solution, right? He compiled it. He he found that there is possible, right? Uh, by he he invented that. This system, by creating a very systematic problem solving and using this methodology based on logic and data, not intuition, not spontaneous, okay? Not spontaneous creativity of individual or group. No, it's based on logic and data. And he, he, he provide, he identifies solution using trees that can be repeated and predictable and reliable because it is very structured, it, is very, it has an algorithm approach, right? And people can solve the problem easily by relying on the, uh, when they refer to tree solution. Let's look further. Now, initially, it was started with 200,000, right? All those compiled, you know, the patent, the paper, all those problems, they synthesize it to 40,000. Right? But today, of course, there are more than 2.8 million patterns have been analyzed and investigated. So what he did was, those days, yeah, uh, he did was he compiled it and he, he summarized it. There are 0.123 where we go into many, many slides. First one, he found that with all the solution, there are certain similar pattern and it can be solved using a 40 inventive principle solution to solve the problem. And it can be repeated in various industries and science, right? There's problem possible to be able to solve uh, using these 40 inventive principles. And second, he will also, uh, he has also found that there are certain pattern of technology, te technical evolution that it can be repeated in various industries and science. So, the solution can also using technology's trend to evolve a product from one generation to the next generation. The third one, of course, we'll look at innovation issue, right? Because this is problem solving and often is connected to innovation. So we will look later on. And the third one about innovation, where we're gonna use scientific effect of outside the field, right? And where we see that where the original problem can be found and the possible solution can be solved in a certain way. So this is an example of the 40 solution, right? So you can see all these are documented clearly and these are the common 40 solution, right? Based on the earlier, you know, 2.8 million, all can be, can be summarized it and solution can be actually found in this, yeah, 40, yeah? Um, uh, principles. Let's, uh, I will only share a few principles because of time constraint, but at least I'm going to use picture to show you. Yeah, this one is, is blocking. Eh? Uh, I'm not sure how to block it, how to bring it. It's blocking the, okay, never mind. So this is called principles of segmentation. So now I think many of us, we are familiar with IKEA, right? Furniture. So this principle is divide an object into independent part and it make an independent uh, object sectional, different, yeah? assemble in different, yeah? easily assemble and disassemble, right? And it can actually increase the degree of an object segmentation or fragmentation 
it can have transition to a micro level. So you could see that example of applying this principle also can be in a camping tank. Now, I'm sure many of you go camping or even in your Lego blocks, right? So this is under the principles of a segmentation. Another example, nested doll. I'm sure many of us go holiday. You can see many, many countries have this house. Very cute doll, right? Right, okay. So these are called uh, nested doll, right? Which means this placement object inside another. You can see it's smaller, smaller. You put it all inside, you know, right? Inside um, in each object and in turn inside and further the other. So you could see that second cups, you see a tripod stand, even luggage, yeah? An antenna, yeah? And even your microscope, right? And you can see a telescope, and you call it telescope, isn't it? So you can see one, make one part pass through a cavity of the other. So this principle is called, uh, principle number seven called nested doll, right? So all this has been actually documented so many years already, yeah? And today, many, many, many industries are applying the concept, the principle. Am I too fast? Uh, Am I too fast? Okay. We are, we are okay with your question. Oh, okay. uh, uh, students, uh, is there any question? In case, no, can I proceed? Can I? Yes, so Ms. basically, uh, hmm, yes, any question? No, no question. So far. Thank you. Okay, okay. Next one, another example. This is principle number 15, yeah? Dynamization, yeah? So again, it allows the characteristic of the object external environment or process to change it to be optimal or to find an optimal operating condition. It can also have uh, this object, yeah? uh, if the object is rigid or inflexible, we make it uh, movable or adaptive. Or we can divide an object into a part capable of movement relative to, to the other, right? So you could see that, you can see today, a lot of products out there you can buy, right? It's something very, uh, uh, very common, right? You found it, right? Today, of course, war, Ukraine war probably can see this, <laughs> this vehicle, right? People are using it. So these, all these are uh, the bicycles or even these, uh, this expandable table, all these using this um, concept, principles number 15, yeah? Next one. So basically, you could see that uh, basically, now let's look at what is the solution for the back to the metal table, right? Because right now, with a 20 cm diameter, what would be a possible solution? Now you want to have more heavy weight, huh? uh, 2,000 kilo of products on the table. Yeah. You could use solution number one, segmentation, break into small parts, table tops and legs because you want it to be carried to the room one to room two, maybe, yeah? So you want, you can put it in segmentation. You can use anti-weight, maybe use string or pulley. Maybe you can use, yeah? Uh, Principle number 15, pull the wheel and use a trolley. Then they like, so you see a lot of office today, their office table has a wheel, right? Yeah, they use this principle. I'm sure many of you can see your office, right? You have this table, yeah? Or even hotel as well. So um, it's blocking, yeah. So another one is um, principle number 40, composite material. You change the material of the, the metal, right? C fiber will be lighter, okay? Or you use a hollow table legs, right? Principle number 31, porous materials. Okay, so, so basically you can see that it's amazing, isn't it? A lot of effort put in by uh, the team researcher and the founder, Ashula, and today it makes life easy. So let's look at now solution number two, right? Look at the technological trend that evolved, right? By understanding the trend, you can predict, you're trying to understand, yeah? Yeah, so this one is called S-curve. So S-curve for business, maybe later on you can see there's some similarities, but this S-curve uh, is actually looking at the S-curve evolution, right? You can see the trend of ideality, the trend of super system, because in trees, when you attend the level one, level two, level three, you can see they break down to very organized systematic. They have a super system, subsystem, you know, so they look at the super system trend. They look at the completeness of the system component. They look at the how to do trimming, cut down elimination of human involvement. They look at the trend of degree of trimming and also trend of optimization flow. Look at the uh, uh, 
trend of increasing coordination or controllability or and also then look at the trend of uh, dynamization. Yeah. So which means you I, I try to identify future product innovation, right? And with this, let's put a picture better. Eh? In picture form, this thing is blocking me. I'm not sure how to put it away. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure how to move it away. Okay. Uh I just don't know what to do. Okay, never mind. Uh, I actually, the trend of increased uh, dynamization is actually identified future product innovation here is like, for example, the substance of the uh, of the product. Yeah, it can start from monolith system, right? Shifted to parameter, so to, uh, shifted to one joint system, then to multi uh, multi joint system, to elastic system, to powder system, and yeah, then you can see to liquid system to gases system, to fuel system, okay? Ah, okay, I'm sure many of you are familiar, right? You found your toothbrush. Huh? First thing you wake up, some of you have even have your special toothbrush with different. This is a monolith type of handle of toothbrush. This uh, type of toothbrush with a shifted parameter. This one is a, a one joint handle, right? And this one is a fill base handle. Uh, of course, this one is elastic. This is a liquid handle, right? And this is a field-based handle. So basically, you can see that uh, this system applying this concept, right? Another one would be our, okay, same thing. We identify the future product innovation. Today, I'm sure many of you, you saw this, right? Uh, your, your house, um, even maybe certain uh, places uh, uh, in a restaurant, they serve, yeah? They have this on the table, induction cooker. But it all started with the, uh, pressurized kerosene stove many years ago. So it evolved. So evolution, yeah? it evolved to cooker flame, to cooker with variable heat, control knots. Yeah. So, and today we saw induction cooker. So what's next, right? So this is how we could actually look at this possible, right? Uh, from constant to gradient to variable, to pulse and resonant to constructive interference, right? So using the different technology context, yeah? And so they applied time, space. Okay, this one is also time. And this is also time, right? This one is constructive interference maybe in future, right? So, so today um, you can see that all these are trying to show the, let me put in all first, or the trend, yeah. So basically you can see trees has technology nine technology, technology trend that can be used to forecast innovation roadmap. And uh, these are just some example, yeah? Not all, yeah? Okay, okay, let's go back to previous. Okay, so which means you can see that from solid, huh, you can move to liquid to gas to fill, trend one. Trend two, rigid to one joint, to two joints, to many joints, to elastic, right? Or maybe trend three, trend four, trend five. So you can use these to predict, right? So that because out there is very competitive, right? And therefore you can look at the patent, patent and you can see how you can actually uh, use, explore across the higher level. They have such thing as called patent blocking, right? They have high level of training, right? Called patent blocking. Or they can use a leapfrog competition, right? So meaning you analyze it and you can actually find solution how to, you know, uh, overcome the competition. So the third one would be innovation use scientific effect outside the field where the original problem was found. Okay, you can see how, right? How it could be explored. Example, let me put this down. So innovation use in this area, like for example, let's do some activity now. Now, you guys, everybody, let's explore now. How would, uh, with these uh, vegetables, uh, this bell pepper, I'm sure many of you are familiar. How would you remove the core from the pepper? Right? Do you use knife to cut and remove the seed? Right? But then um, you need to remove the millions of the, what do you call that? The millions of, what do you call that? The seed, right? How would you do that? Think about it. Now, I want, this is an activity, yeah? I would like, yeah? Uh, all the students think about it and give me a solution. Share, share on the, Chat box. Yeah, what is the solution? How do you remove the core?
Any any partic any uh, an answer from our audience? Uh, yes. Anyone? Oh, please. Never in my life I remove. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Balkis, uh, so we can perhaps use automatic multi knives to work all at once. Okay. In Zoom chat. Thank you, Balkis. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Oh, that's spoon. Yeah. yeah. Okay, ah, you spoon, you saw, okay. <laughs> right, thank you for respond. Thank you very much. Yeah, so let's look at the answers. Yeah, okay. So the answers could be, right, using the, um, um, let me push it up, yeah. Uh, using a slowly raise pressure, then suddenly reduce it. And you put in, yeah, there's an air, right, pressure on the pepper. So you pressure it and then suddenly you release it and it will, the seed will, yeah, the, the stems and the seed will be separated from the pepper. Okay, so this is a generic solution. And let's look at how this solution can be applied in other contexts. Yeah, this one. Now, how do you remove the shell from the, the nuts, Jada nuts? Now, like the audience, so give me his answer. Give 30, 30 seconds, think about this, discuss and see. What yeah, do you think? Everyone. Yeah. Any? Any suggestion, answer to this? Students, any possible solution? Okay, never mind. Okay, let me shake it. Hmm? Shake it yeah. off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Manually, yeah. is it? Okay. Look at those. There are so many millions, you know. <laughs> very hard work. <laughs> hard work, yeah? A lot of hard work, right? If you do it one by one, very hard work. Take a lot of time, right? Uh, so, so let's look at the solution now. Okay. Same, okay. right? We had actually, um, so we could see that here. Same thing, using same generic solution here. Slowly raise the pressure and suddenly reduce it. Same thing. And the, the, record that the, the nuts will be removed from the skin. From the shell, sorry, from the shell, right? Right, so same solution, yeah? Different, yeah? Different context of the uh, object, yeah? So let's do the next one. So you can see that right, huh? the solution can be used right outside the field from the original problem was found. Okay. And, and we can see that for diamond, right? Right. 1945, they found solution for this, uh, this uh, uh, what do call that? A bell pepper. 1950, they found solution for this nuts. 1972, they found the same solution for the diamond. Interesting, isn't it? So diamond can be placed in pressure chamber. High pressure forces air into the micro fracture, uh, fracture uh, fractures and then release the pressure and you can break the diamonds into crystal. Okay, so you can see, right? Innovative solution, right? It can actually found in, uh, in these other contexts yeah, of object. Any question, student? No, yeah. Yes. Okay. You can raise your hand if you have some uh, question or comments. <laughs> so interesting, right? Okay, let's go to the next one. So, so the thing is, um, we do not look at uh, because often people say, "I use try and error lah." You know, use try and error in Malaysia. You call lah try and error lah. Yeah. So the thing is, it's quite costly to have try and error. If we use trees, we has a structured, systematic problem that's ready for us to bring out and refer. That will serve the Solve your, uh, save your time and you can look at the possible solution to try on, right? So you see, remember those days, uh, we want to increase our efficiency and speed of innovation. Those days, you see, our, 
our uh, the, the genius of this uh, Thomas Edison. He took so long, right? See, he spent, I think, 1879, he spent 40,000 US dollar. Those days so expensive. He performed 1,200 experiments with 5,000 researchers, you know. He succeeded to make a light bulb, yeah. But then the light bulb burned only for two days, right? And electric light took the uh, greatest amount of time and required most complicated experiment for all his, exp all his experiments. So you can see time is an issue here. Today, a lot of us are facing time, right? We want to increase safe time, safe cost, yeah? Uh, speed is important, right? So trees help us, yeah? So we know innovation today is very risky, right? A lot of people keep on innovate, come up with a lot of problem, a lot of solution to the problems, yeah? So if you have 5,000 problem, only one success, yeah? You come up with a product and then, but the product may actually have only one success case, right? So it's not easy, right, in product development, right? So um, using try and error, right? It's often a lot of people use it there, right? And structure way, yeah, some people use brainstorming, trigger approach, checklist, yeah? And um, I want to call that, and, and other approaches. But trees way, we use functional analysis, cause and effect analysis, yeah? uh, a trimming and S-curve, and many, many other methods, yeah? So trees has recorded the method step by step. So which means you can have a very structured methodologies through various tools that you can learn from trees, and you can save time to solve problem and you can innovate from existing problems that already been found by other people and you can further make some adjustment, modifying. Mm, Mrs. Okay. Me, you have 15 minutes left. Okay, never mind, I'm finishing. So which okay. means, yeah, these are the companies, yeah? These are the companies that use this products, you can see that there are many companies, you can see the brand are very familiar, right? Yeah, okay. So I don't have to uh, uh, say much already on what brand. So then, um, so therefore you can see a lot of um, uh, uh, US uh, the press, you know, they talk about this, right? About how they apply trees, yeah? In Samsung, in many, many others, right? In Malaysia, we have Proton Iris, also using tree solution. So you could see that trees has tools and application. Tree, uh, models of problems, models of solution, forecasting, yeah? And we have, it can be applied to people issue and it's very robust, yeah? solution for robust, robustness are some issues, some problems sometimes we cannot solve. We try can apply it, yeah? Possible problem that can be solved. And then, yeah. So these are some example of some training trees if you sign up, um, wish the uh, the UCs are, are actually collaborating with Trees uh, Malaysia, my Trees Malaysia. They are, I will inform Mr. Gancha. If you going, if uh, students want to know more information, you can approach uh, uh, Dr. Gancha. There are certain UCs are already collaborating. There's some event there. They are talking about Trees Level One in Indonesia. So they're bringing Trees to Indonesia now. Okay, of course there are other level, right? Other level and getting more and more difficult, but it's learning, uh, learning a, a different solution for that, right? Yeah. And then, um, so these are some of the level one, level two, level three. Okay. And then, yeah. So basically, summary of that, yeah. Summary of this is that uh, trees have 25 tools that we can customize based on needs, yeah. And therefore, uh, it can provide the, the how, right? It can, it can be complement with other methods. People learn Lean, Six Sigma, Blue Ocean, Design Thinking, uh, and many, many more, right? Okay, and therefore, uh, according to the founder, he said, you don't have to wait 100 years of enlightenment. Uh, you can solve problems in 15 minutes with these principles already um, provided for you to refer, right? For the founder, Genrich Arshula. Okay, thank you. Any question? Thank you so much, Miss. Uh, we, we invite uh, the participants. Yes, Bilkis. Uh, yes. Um, first of all, thank you very much, uh, Miss uh, Miling Oi, for uh, the presentation uh, and the information uh, you just delivered. It's very interesting. 
uh, I actually have two questions. Uh, the first question is that uh, I'm interested to know uh, about the trees uh, that has uh, uh, a lot of principles and a lot of uh, solutions for uh, multiple problems. Uh, what I am what I am interested to know is that uh, can we make sure that uh, this trees is uh, actually sustainable and can be used for uh, a long time or are there some principles or some uh, solutions that are uh, that are can only be used in a limited limited of time or um, uh, it can't actually be used uh, long enough uh, for us uh, and the second question is that i'm also interested in the uh, nested doll method uh, uh, may I know more about uh, how we might be able to use the nested doll method uh, in uh, in uh, to applic uh, to uh, to apply it uh, to uh, examples of like organization problems, like uh, what kind of organization problems and uh, solutions that we can uh, use uh, in applying this uh, nested doll method. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe that's all for the questions. Uh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um... Actually, uh, because today is only one hour kind of a long lecture, they actually have uh, their Malaysian trees, my trees, uh, they're going to bring it to Indonesia. Uh, if you guys sign up for the level one, uh, you can arrange to the NISI, to NISI, where they provide and they can teach you uh, uh, actually uh, uh, many, many recorded, it's a recorded, it's already recorded in a, in a book, you, know? you will get a, a manual, you get a manual. There's a many, many uh, solution that's actually using that, that that's the doll, you know. So all these already, they show a lot of solution already have. All these principles applied in many, many. So you have a, like a manual for you. So you, you bring it home and you can use it. So you're wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And you can get a set as well. You can have a set level one, level two. Yeah. Okay. And um, I would like to share next. something. Ah, let yeah. me share something. Uh, uh, it's um, um, right now, uh, because right now, let me, uh, no doubt is uh, actually not uh, in my, it's additional slide, yeah? this additional slide, this is a backup. Um, uh, actually, uh, who won that? Eh? Let me put in my screen again. Uh, the last slide, I'm gonna put in the last slide, yeah. Okay, uh, the last slide. So what happened was, um, because today, uh, it's good that you ask, you're curious because uh, you're from business. And today you can see that, um, well, we are always looking at, you know, now uh, we are predicting future of marketing, future of business, you know, look at a man, machine, method, material. So uh, trees actually provide solutions for many, many broad area for us to explore. Very interesting. Trees is a very interesting. Uh, uh, principle for us to learn. Very interesting. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Uh, Belkis, any comments or another question? Was it enough? Oh yeah. Uh, uh, thank you uh, for uh, the answers. Uh, yeah, I, I'm. I'm actually very interested uh, of the trace method because, uh, as uh, you have said, that it actually can cover up uh, a broad uh, topics uh, for us to solve solutions. Uh, so I assume that with the, uh, the capability of this trace to cover up a, a broad, uh, a broad, uh, a broad field, uh, that it is uh, sustainable enough for us to probably use to uh, a long time, right? Yeah, mm. uh, and uh, for the uh, uh, yeah, nested doll maybe. Uh, can can I actually have like uh, more uh, insights about uh, how uh, how we might use like uh, in what, what kind of cases that uh, we use the nested doll mm. method? <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. you. Have a with me, uh, yeah. we have a level one that cover a lot on that. So right now I don't have a slide to show you, um, but a lot, a lot, many, many, yeah. So, uh, because today, I, uh, this is a one hour lecture, it's just very broad. Yeah, yeah. So I cannot give you illustration, yeah. But, but uh, uh, all of you are undergraduates or even masters is very important skill. It's good that you're already very curious because you see, year 2002, right? We have facing COVID, now we are post COVID. And yeah, it's good, yeah? It trained us, yeah? It provides us to have an outlook, uh, trained with analytical thinking, innovation, and we have a tool ready, the tools ready, the body principles and many, many methods uh, uh, for us to looking at the tools and we can have active learning and learning strategies. We can increase our creativity, you know, we can start off, you know, not, not uh, uh, try and error, you know, we can save time. 
we can apply in many, many contexts, you know. And today, problem solving are uh, very important skills. Employ looking at these skills, right? Not just a degree, but your ability to solve problem. My undergraduate student told me, the employee asked them, what problem can you solve? They asked them, you know, yeah, there you are. So able to have reasoning, problem solving skill, and ideation is very important. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for your question. Maybe a uh, letter, uh, Mrs. Me. Uh, would you mind if you share your uh, for, uh, for a point or maybe you have some reference for the certification maybe in the context of the Yeah, I uh, Mrs. Me, would you mind letter if you want, uh, if you share your uh, PowerPoint? Sure, sure. And I, maybe... will, I will give I will give to Gato, uh, Dr. Gancha. Yeah, no problem. Can. Okay, thank you so much. And maybe if Belkis wants to learn more about uh, 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 these methods or maybe the nested doll principle, maybe you can uh, give us some reference uh, mm, sure. in which yeah, uh, website. I have, I have, there are many books, huh? there are many books. You ah, can yeah. Thank no you so problem. much. Can. Can. Sure, no problem. Belkis, uh, uh, case closed, right? Correct? Yes, okay, thank, thank, you thank you very you. much, Mr. Tantawi and uh, Ms. Milingoy. Thank you, Belkis. Thank you. Pleasure, Belkis. And okay, uh, next question. I invite the other students uh, to participate a, oh, in this discussion. Question, it? Yeah, uh, so. yeah, it oh, could okay. be. Uh, okay. Maybe we okay, have so, like so, uh, so it's a quite similar question, right? It's a similar question, right? Okay. Right. Yeah, it was it was the, the question from Balkis. I was uh, mm. I was sending it to you. Okay. So uh maybe uh, uh from me, uh Mrs. Me. And so, uh, as far as I understand, uh, okay. if we have, if we learn something, if we learn some basic uh, principles, methods, or maybe tools, there are some possible limitation mm. for particular uh, principle or maybe methods. Uh, in, mm. According to you, uh, what are the possible limitation for these methods? Mm. Because you see, uh, as you see put in there, let's go back to your. Because you see here, um, we want to hear the voice of customer, the voice of product, the voice of technology. But customer want to pay, pay cheap product, cheap product and good product, right? But it's not easy, right? Because if it's so convenient, but it could be a cost, who going to bear the cost? The cost on the customer or the, on the company? No company going to have a, a create a, a product that is a losses, correct? So. Therefore, you, there is always a compromise uh, in the sense that employee may not want to use the solution because it's good for the customer, but not good for the, um, uh, the company. They are looking for profit as well. So not easy, right? Not easy, yeah? Huh? Because um, the voice customer, the voice of product and voice of technology, we need to look at the, you know, how, uh, is it cheaper? Is it cheap? Is it a safe time? Is it, you know, right? Uh, is it the market for the product, right? Right. Okay. So we have to find the, the sweet spot between those three. Mm. Uh, okay. It's it's answered. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Me. Okay. Uh, anyone want to join with our discussion? Maybe Dr. Ganjar, you have some uh, issue to ask. Yes, uh, for me, I think it's a new thing uh, because I'm not used to uh, discuss about product development, about <laughs> how to develop uh, apa, new kind of product. I think it's uh, apa, not for marketing side, but it's very, very related with uh, marketing, especially about how to manage uh, innovative products, something like that. So I think we can combine, we can look for the uh, invention before and we make a prediction about the future. Right. What uh, kind of uh, development that will be hmm. happen in the future. Uh, hmm. So I think we should understand the pattern from uh, the last uh, and to the future. Uh, is there any path, is there any pattern that we can learn uh, from the uh, from uh, something from the journey of the product. All right, all right. Three has like... one, one called called nine window. You can see that they break down to super system, system and subsystem. You see, okay, let's go back. We all understand coconut, right? Clapper. Do you call clapper in Indonesia? 
Yeah, we have the yes. same. Uh, Lapa. <laughs> Lapa. Okay. Super system, all the environment, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, subsystem is uh, the Lapa, right? The the actually um what do you call that? Uh, the uh, uh the the part, the component of the system, right? That means the the meat of the what? Uh, the meat of the uh of the coconut. Okay. And you can see that uh, you can break down, right? Thinking in terms of space and time. Um, and even if you like, for example, like cup, cup, now you have a cup here, system here, and the present here, right? Uh, you look at, you know, this is a picture of the hand. And for super system, you can see the cup is actually, you can place a cup on the table. Super system, the environment, you want to have the, the temperature of the product, the, maybe the temp, the, you want to have the coffee warm, how to keep the coffee form and it's uh, let's say in the winter, you know, or the or the the or the, or the ice melt, maybe ice cream melt you know, because the weather is so hot now nowadays. Yeah. So I define the super system. The system, the cup, what can you do maybe to make the the, the drink hot, cold, you know? So therefore you can break down this called nine window, right? Nine window is one way for look at the space and time, or another one is trees forecasting, or uh do a transformation in the evolution. Is this similar or different? Right? Okay. And or we look at the forecast tool, the S curve. I think uh, students learn uh, business, they learn about uh, stage, intro stage, the birth, uh, the S curve, uh, the birth stage, the intro stage, uh, the uh, growth stage, maturity, and decline stage. So look at the main parameter of value of the product. So we can look at this, the life cycle of the product. And uh, look at the trend evolution context is also a tool for you to look at forecasting or uh, the S curve, right? Natural. And you can combine it with others. Uh, and then uh, there are some, uh, some area for you look at the target of the system, right? So there's a lot of things actually, a lot of things you could actually do. You can plan on your MPV. So, um, so these are some pictures of, yeah, uh, trying to look at the first, the, I think a lot of us know the iPhone, right? The iPhone, the iPhone today is very much on maturity now. Yeah, so now what's next? Yeah? Is it chip on your body? <laughs> now what's the MPV you're looking at? Yeah, yeah. So, so basically um, like for this one, you look at life cycle of this company. What do you think of the life cycle of the company? And look at how we place them in the life cycle. Yeah, so today uh, S curve is one way. I'm not sure whether I answer your question, Dr. Gancha. Yeah, so there are many, many tools actually you can use, not just the 40 principles. Yeah. Yes, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Me. And uh, last question, or we can move to the next session. Okay, sure, I'll stop presenting now. Okay. Okay, uh, students and the positive, uh, participants. Uh, uh, Mrs. Me, uh, apologize. Can you, could you please uh, turn on your video? Okay, so we have a certificate uh, awarding session, uh, Mrs. Mo. Mm. Okay, so uh, let me share my screen. Uh, Mr. Gancher and Mrs. Me, you oh. can. Thank you very much. Okay. Mr. Gancher, please. Yes, thank you. Uh, Mrs. May Leng Oi, you give us a new insight, new information, new knowledge for us about how to uh, about doing some product development. Yes. So we have to make a treasure from something that we already have in the past uh, few years, past few days. We have to look for the pattern, for the pattern that we have, and then we have to predict about the future that we have. So uh, really, really inspiring for us. And uh, maybe it will be fruitful if we make some uh, collaboration for uh, conducting workshop, especially a detailing workshop, workshop that can make detail about uh, what, how, and uh, maybe uh, there is a learning that experiential based learning that we can do because if we only saw the concept, maybe it maybe uh, is something new for us. But if there is uh, experiential based learning, 
uh, we can watch uh, one product that change into a different kind of product, something that you already give the picture. I think it will be fruitful that we can conduct in, in the future next days, in the future next month or uh, or what. Thank you again. Uh, hopefully okay. that we can uh, continue our collaboration. Thank you so much. This is me. Uh, from uh, Dr. Gancha. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we will have uh, this uh, recorded session uh, in our YouTube department. So for the students and participants who have maybe who haven't joined yet, you can access our uh, material letters in our uh, YouTube department. Uh, thank you so much, Mrs. Me. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Gancar. And then we can uh, we move on to the next session. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So for other, don't move away from this Zoom link. Uh, we want uh, to we continue. We have the second case lecture. Yes, we will continue for our second case lecture. So during these two hours, uh, I already told you that we have two topics uh, that important for us uh, doing business, uh, doing things, especially in pandemic area. Uh, we have issues that in pandemic area, we have many transformation, many changing, uh, especially how to make service how to make uh, apa, a good service for our customer. Because uh, something that difficult is during pandemic, we cannot meet with our customer. And then sometimes it really difficult to make measurement about is it effective uh, service quality, service management that we have. Because uh, when we conduct offline, maybe we can share uh, the questionnaire and they will fill it, uh, the questionnaire for us. But how about this pandemic era? Uh, maybe if you want to send their uh, your uh, questionnaire, they will let it go, let it pass away, and they didn't feel anything to share it to you again. Uh, so it's very, very difficult and very ch challenging, not difficult. It's very challenging how to manage service during pandemic and uh, much more challenging how to measure the effectiveness of our uh, um, customer service. So with us, uh, there is Dr. Kanes Kopal that already uh, with us in here in the, uh, this sim link. Uh, Dr. Kanes Kopal is from the same university yes. uh, like... Yes. May uh, Mrs. Mele Oi, uh, that Dr. Kanes Gopal from Tunku Abdul Rahman University College. Yes. Okay, so maybe we will start our uh, discussion. So you may present your material uh, for our audience. Please, okay. Dr. Thank Kanes you. Gopal. Okay. Thank you, um, Dr. Gansa. And um, may I check, uh, can all of you hear me clearly? Yeah, uh, it is clear. very clear, Professor. Okay, it is visible as well. Uh, there is a very, very visible uh, PowerPoint that we have. Okay. Uh, can can may I check? Can all of you see my PowerPoint slides? Yes, it's okay. visible. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, uh, first and foremost, thank you so much to Dr. Gansa, um, and uh, Mr. Tantobi plus Miss Ui, and and everyone here today. So um, I will be continuing with this um, guest lecture series um, by talking a bit on service quality. So um, this services or service marketing is something that is quite important in marketing. It is something that is quite important in management and we have to, to often reflect on it, especially during the pandemic that we're going through now. So this title that I'm trying to share with all of you is known as service quality and establishing the critical success of consumer services during a pandemic. So without further ado, uh, let's go on to the first, uh, the first part of this, uh, this topic. So let's start by discussing what is customer service. So consumer services is something that we, we, often, we often talk about and we often think um, we deal with it often uh, as a marketer and in a business or a management environment. 
consumer services is the support you offer to your consumers, both before and after they buy and use your products and services. This type of service is more like an experience, the experience that helps them to have an easy and enjoyable experience or easy, easy and enjoy, uh, enjoyable time with, with, with you as the consumer. So we are trying to talk about making sure or ensuring or sustaining the positive experience of the consumers. And that is something that we will be reflecting by looking at the COVID-19 pandemic. So we all know that giving or offering a good consumer service is crucial if we want to retain consumers and grow your business. All of us have a business to ensure a good amount of profitability. So today's consumer service goes far beyond the traditional, the methods that was conducted in the 90s and the 80s, whereby everything was done via telephone support, or we have to have a face-to-face -face session. These days, we are doing everything by looking at an email, the web, text messages, and of course, the, the importance of social media. Okay? Many organizations, they actually provide self-service support. So if you buy anything online, if you go on uh, to um, e-commerce platforms or social commerce platforms, you will find that consumers can find their answers or have their queries answered at any time, day or night. So these are mostly something to do with a 24-hour self-support system. And this is a part of consumer services or customer services. Okay, so uh, the idea of customer, you know, customer support and customer service is more than just providing you with solid answers. It's more on, on trying to enhance your brand, making sure that your brand is basically positioned as number one in the minds of the consumers. And this is done often these days. Okay, regardless whether during the pandemic or pre-pandemic, consumer services was something that is very important. So we, we solidify or we understand what is consumer services. In our mind, we can have an idea into what is consumer service. And then we understand that consumer service is a huge, is, is, is a massive part of uh, the value given by the organization. Now we look into the concept of um, services or customer service and see how it reflects into the success of your business entity. So we know now that consumer services is something that is extremely critical when it comes to competing effectively and making sure that you are the front runner or the pioneer as compared to your competitors. Okay, When we look into the past, again, before the COVID-19 pandemic, consumers chose which companies based on price or the product. Okay, But these days, the overall experience is often the driver. Most of us, we often get angry when the experience that we have is negative. If we buy a car, the car may be good, but if the salesperson is actually not professional or does not give you a good experience, then you might actually tell to yourself or tell to the person that you will choose or you will go and patronize elsewhere. So what I'm trying to see here or, or what I'm trying to, to, to share with all of you here is that consumer services is all about the overall experience. Okay, And we must understand that Ensuring that the experience is positive is something that is very much uh, needed these days. Okay, you look at these uh, the the ideology or the comments that I've uh, the points that I've put here. Eighty about eighty two percent of CEOs reported that consumer expectations of their companies were much higher than they were three years ago. So consumers are in a way evolving. Consumers no longer want to buy the product and no longer look at aspects such as price and things like this, but they're looking into the experience, the holistic experience that they have to go through. So when, when sharing this with, with all of you as, as students, we, we must be able to understand that we are looking at something that is very, very intangible, something that we cannot grasp, which is an experience. How can we sell a positive experience and how can we ensure that a positive experience has some value to related or in related to your, to, to your organization, okay? So that is what consumer service is when we look at it from, from, from a, a profit point of view. We want to make sure that these experiences are somehow monetized. It is somehow connected to the profit of the company. So consumer services can of course have a big impact on, on the consumers uh, itself. Huh? 
it is often said that it's cheaper to keep existing consumers than to find new ones. We all know as marketing students or as business students that acquiring new consumers actually costs the, the, the business entity around six to seven times more than keeping or dealing with existing consumers. Okay, and we also understand or we are aware that bad consumer service is a key driver of churn, okay? Consumers leave from one organization to the other because of a negative experience. So these are all trying to share with you. What I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to highlight the points that consumer services are, uh, are things or elements that somehow impact the profit of an organization. Bad consumer service results in consumers not being retained in an organization. Okay, so these are some of the things that I'm trying to trying to highlight here to, to say that it has a connection with the business and the profit of a you know of an organization itself. Now we go back still into the essence or the importance of consumer services. Consumer service is how your company interacts with its consumers, both in daily transaction and in solving a problem. I mentioned earlier that when it comes to consumer service, it has something to do with the profitability. And it's extremely important to enhance the consumer service if you want to retain your consumers. We want consumers to be with our companies for a long-term period because loyal consumers, as we all know, ensure that the profit is quite, quite enhanced. So the first thing about enhancing or focusing on consumer service is to ensure that you do it with a cause that it helps you to retain consumers. They are more likely to return these consumers of yours when you have a good solid consumer service given to them. The more your company can grow to its, you know, to, 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 to enhance or to, to, um, to give them a, a, a very good positive consumer service experience, the larger the prospect for your company to grow. If your consumer services team has a positive seamless procedures that let's say makes payments like make it making it online, making the transaction much more easier, then of course you are more likely to retain the consumers. We see social commerce, we see e-commerce such as um, in, in Southeast Asia, we see Lazada, we see Shopee. These types of service-based transactions are often somehow impacting the loyalty of their consumer bases or ensuring that the consumer base or the consumers are much more loyal if the online transaction is much more positive, okay? So what I'm trying to say here is that it ensures that we are able to retain consumers by looking or putting or emphasizing more into consumer services. Then we look into the second point of why we, we have to look or we have to think of consumer services. It, somehow impacts our own employees. Our employees want to work or want to uh, basically be in a company that treats their consumers fairly. We have seen many times where the customers will complain to the employees and the employees are powerless. Okay, So when the employees know that the organization is actually focusing on consumer service and basically delivering a good quality, you know, a good quality exceptional consumer service base, they will be more likely to become advocates to the business. They will be more likely to patronize that, that, that business entity itself. Okay, So it has to be a win-win situation. Not only are we ensuring that consumers are basically loyal with us, we are ensuring that our employees are loyal with us. Okay, Because the last thing we want to do is to lose our very own employees and retrain a new employee. Similar to consumers, having to retrain or having to find new employees are much more expensive and much, much more difficult to do than retaining our current employees, okay? So that is another point to actually uh, look at as uh, uh, when we're trying to focus on the importance of consumer services. And then we look into the third point, which is it reinforces company values and brand. We know that whenever there's a good consumer service or when there's a good service quality in an organization, then people the consumers will often reflect it on the brand name of the organization. You, we all know that great consumer service can result in positive reviews. You have positive word of mouth. You have positive, now they have this thing known as e warm electronic word of mouth. All of this positive type of gossip 
can basically impact your business. It be, you know it, it basically impacts the, the 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 profit of your business on a whole. Okay, so remember we look at it holistically. Okay, positivity when it comes to positive word of mouth will somehow impact the profit to your organization, and that is what we're trying to do. We want our brand, our company, to have a very high position in the minds in the in the, in the minds of the consumers. Okay, we want the positioning to be quite reinforced. Okay, and then the last few types of uh, importance when it comes to consumer services is that it generates referrals. Okay, we know that there's a positive word of mouth coming out from a good experience. And we know that when there is a positive word of mouth, of course, people, more consumers, more prospective consumers would start to patronize your company. So we are trying in our way, we are able to use this thing that we, we call consumer services or efficient and effective consumer services to ensure that more and more profit is impacting our company, okay? Because a much better service quality somehow impacts, much, you know, it allows for a much better consumer satisfaction. And in a way, when there's a good number of consumer satisfaction, it allows for more positive word of mouth. And of course, this results in more customers on a whole, ensuring a much more positive profit, okay? So this is another thing that I would say. When we are having a good consumer service, we are able to generate a positive impact, a positive set of referrals, okay? Because of course, it is related to positive word of mouth as well, okay? And then of course, we have to, we have to mention that it gives a competitive advantage. We are living or we are going through an industry or an industrial an environment, a business environment, whereby there are more than one people or there are more than one uh, organization basically competing to get the market share. So how can your company give that competitive advantage or give that competitive edge? So a good set of consumer service basically sets you apart from your competitors, okay? You enhance the consumer services, you ensure that the consumers are having a very positive experience, and this is somehow reflecting on the values of your brand, okay? It elevates your reputation in the market, and it shows that you as an entity, as an organization, as a brand, actually cares for the people, okay? Or actually cares about the people who actually go and buy your product, okay? So when it comes to consumer services, it is the current thing, or it is, the, it is one of the massive uh, points that seem to impact overall, uh, you know, overall business uh, positivity, okay? Regardless whether it's brand name or it's overall profit, but consumer services are actually extremely, extremely important. Okay, so these are points that I, I wanted to share with all of you on just the basic or the importance of this thing known as consumer services. So now we go into the, uh, the point of where we are now, okay? So we go into the pandemic, okay? We are aware that we just, um, I, I would say that we are recovering from uh, a, a pandemic, okay? Uh, a first, first once in a hundred year pandemic, that has you know that has impacted the world quite uh, quite extensively. So, how has consumer services been, or how has consumer services changed after the the the, the adverse of this 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 virus this COVID nineteen virus? Okay, so we all are aware that the recent outbreak of the novel uh, the, the 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 basic the COVID nineteen okay the pandemic has somehow introduced many unique challenges that businesses have never faced. Okay, or businesses has never even, even thought about before. Okay, we are aware that management teams are having to deal with a variety of issues. Okay, we are looking at um, changing the entire face-to-face -face setting. Previously, consumer services was about enjoying the experience, having two people, having three people, having a group of people to basically enjoy themselves and have a good experience. But now, with the pandemic, people are forced to go back to their, you know, to their houses and go back to their quarantine areas and things like that. So it is a bit of, an, of a hindrance for the management team to actually have a positive consumer service environment, okay? So they are having to deal with these various types of issues, okay? Ranging from health, safe, you know, uh, safety, the satisfaction of consumers, as well as how these types of elements seem to impact the, the entire uh, company itself. So we have to remember that COVID-19, had an impact on the very own, you know, the, the organization's employee performance. 
people or employees in an organization are no longer as efficient as before. Okay, employees are human beings themselves. They have things to things, you no know, things to, to to basically think about. When the pandemic hit all of us, employees started thinking of their own families. Employees started thinking of the future of the of their work or their job in the organization. The tourism industry was hit massively when the COVID nineteen the pandemic came. Um, uh, layoffs, turnover rates were were high. Okay, um, retired I mean, people were people were basically um, uh, fired because of the uh, lack of profit from the uh, uh, tourism industry. Hotels were firing their their employees and things like that. All of this somehow seem to impact employees' uh, mental health, and of course, it dwindles down to somehow creating a negative type of performance from the employees. So eventually, the efficiency of the employees will be impacted, okay, due to this pandemic. And then when we look at the consumer's point of view, they, they no longer spend as much as they spent before. Consumers have worries such as health anxieties, economic insecurities, isolations, and things like, like they never thought before. Previously, things were much more um, positive and happier, but now with the pandemic, or when the pandemic happened, about a year ago, consumers changed the way they thought, okay? Money is spent on things that only matter. So it's difficult for them to be using their money to go and patronize or to go and buy something from, a, from an organization that extensively as they were doing before, okay? So these are things for you to, for you to basically think, okay? So we have to remember from a consumer service point of view, we have to go out of our way to assist people during this pandemic. Okay, but having or ensuring a good positive consumer service is not something that is easy. Okay, um, you have to remember that many of these employees are working from home. Okay, they are working remotely. So for them, it is quite difficult to, to basically transfer the service to the consumers. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, services are something or services can be something that is very intangible. We, we can't we can't capture the experience we can't we can't um, basically hold the experience it is something that is very difficult for us to capture okay so we have to look at the point of view as well okay the professionals that are dealing with consumer services have their own families to cope with and they will be basically finding it difficult to to cope with this pandemic so let's move on to what were the changes seen okay caused by these issues in the industry So we look into the effect or the impact of the COVID pandemic on consumer services. Now we look at a simple uh, survey conducted by NBC. Okay, this is in America. 75% of respondents said that consumer service had actually deteriorated during the pandemic. Main consumer service problems you can see here, slow response time. We understand that this is an, 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 an a crucial thing when it comes to uh, service quality. Even before the pandemic, people would get angry when the response time from an organization is actually shorter. Uh, actually, sorry, actually longer. Okay, so we cannot have people waiting. We cannot have consumers to wait. Okay, people cannot be too slow. The organization cannot be too slow in responding to these consumers. So these are consumer service elements that somehow impact. Okay, impact the, the entire um, uh, the, the, the positivity of the consumer experience. Then we talk about root communication of consumer service staff. We talk about consumer service staff that are also pent up with their own negativity or their worries and their, you know, their, their, their downgrading uh, mental health that they basically become much more ruder. Okay, so these are all service quality problems that was not seen so often before the pandemic. Okay, and then of course we can't we can't run away from the lack of real time engagement. We find that it's difficult for for consumer service uh, personnel to actually engage with the with the consumers um, face to face or in real time because of this pandemic. Most of them are working at home and they have a different type of a different type of work shift that is done these days in most organizations. So all of this somehow impacts the experience of the consumers. Okay. So what I'm trying to say here is that the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on consumer service has been massive, okay? 74% of them have actually complained that it, it had become quite uh, quite uh, terrible during the pandemic. 
So these are things that we have to think of when we are looking from a consumer service personnel or a consumer service marketer point of view. Okay, We look into the service sector. We look into how the experience has been impacted by COVID-19. Okay. So these are some of the problems that were reported by, by consumers. And we have to deal with this or we have to come up with a mechanism or with, uh, with a few points on how to deal with this type of uh, problems in the, in the business sector. So for these types of, uh, or these types of uh, uh, points, I think most of us know as, marketer, as marketers or marketing students, we know that these are, these are elements that, is, that, that are, okay, you know, uh, can be quite common. We have heard about this before. Okay? So as you can see here, even before uh, the COVID-19 uh, happened, okay? we know that poor customer service will basically impact the retention. Consumers would no longer or would, would not want to be within, you know, they, they would not want to, to patronize the company anymore. So they will talk negatively. They will share the experience, the negative experiences on social media. And we know now that everything and everyone is, it, it is basically on social media. We are seeing that consumers are massively manipulated by social media. Social media impacts them. Social media somehow changes the way consumers behave, okay? The brand can either be extremely, extremely popular or can be broken and be destroyed just by the usage of social media. So these are the, 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 the risk factors that organizations must think of due to negative consumer experience. Okay? And of course, when the consumers start leaving or start going to a competitor organization, then the business of the, the entire um, uh, the, the entire business entity itself seems to crash. Okay, the, the, the profit basically seems to crash. You will see that the business is impacted. Profit is reduced. And of course, the employees will be laid off. So it is more of a chain reaction. When you have a negative consumer service given to the consumers, you will find that it somehow impacts the business or it somehow impacts the, 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 the organization and the profit. Okay, so this was something that even before or prior to the pandemic has been something that, that is often, uh, often highlighted. Okay, so it is good to know or it's good to, to, to be aware of this when we go into addressing or assessing the consumer service problems during this pandemic. So I will, I will just um, go on. So if you have any questions, uh, please, please feel free to share. Uh, to 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 just join and just um, uh, ask me, or you may ask at the end of the of the session. So we look back into the main things that the main elements that consumers need. They need support. They need the consumers need the personnel to be a bit more empathic. The consumers need the business owners to be a bit more understanding. When COVID nineteen first hit the world, most organizations were not aware what to do with their consumer service operations because we are all so, so commonly using face-to-face -face daily, daily interactions. So they were scrambling. They did not know how to help their consumers. So they had to change their consumer service methods or their customer service operations in 24 seven or in 24 hours. Basically what I'm trying to say is it had to change quickly, okay? Because when there is a lack of customer service, immediately the profit is impacted. So for large corporations like McDonald's, like uh, corporations like, like Pizza Hut and things like that, they immediately address the issue of how we deal with cost, uh, customer service. Okay, They ensure that there's a 24-7 or there's a 24-hour uh, uh, help or, or, or self-support system online available for consumers. Complaints from consumers were made or were done quite effectively via online means. Okay, Facebook accounts were suddenly, you know, they were they were they were popping up everywhere of huge brands. Okay, new brands, new uh, organizations that did not have this 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 social media presence suddenly begin to have influencers and um, Instagram accounts and in Instagram uh, pages and Facebook pages that is just there to address consumer service elements or consumer service problems. Okay, so that is basically why you know. Uh, uh, organization had to had to basically scramble to help their consumers. So as this crisis somehow seems to be enhancing, 
okay, we are basically having an opportunity to relook into our brand strategy to ensure that consumers are taken care of and highlighted as the heart of the business. So more and more organizations are looking from a consumer's perspective, trying to see what exactly the consumer wants. We are trying to see what are the problems that the consumers have. And by looking from the, from the lens of the consumer, we are able to understand how to enhance the consumer service operations. So now, now we look into um, two, two, point, you know, two, two elements of how COVID-19 had impacted the consumer services. Two, two, we, look at, we look from the lens of two, two uh, forces. One is the employees and one, of course, from the consumers and the, the, the management and things like that. So let's look at the employees first. So when it came to the, the organizations, how can you ensure that your employees are actually taken care of during a pandemic? So firstly, organizations should consider the possibility of establishing a dedicated cross-functional team, ensuring that these cross-functional team of, of business units can monitor and check and attend to necessary issues that may happen in relation to consumer services. So we have a, a solid, a positive management or a positive team to communicate with employees, consumers, business partners, we, we talk about advertisers, we talk about uh, people from the uh, finance division in an organization, people from the, from the promotional division. So we have to have a cross-functional team within a business that somehow works together so that when we have a problem, everyone is, is, is basically aware of the problem. So many of these types of um, these types of steps were not actually taken or emphasized previously prior to the pandemic. But when the pandemic happened, if you don't look into these aspects, you'll remember that profit will immediately start crashing. And that was why smart or, or good companies immediately started to handle the issue or to deal with the issue um, uh, quite, quite efficiently. So the first point here that we can think of when it came to the organizational point of view of ensuring that the impact of COVID-19 is reduced is by ensuring a good cross-functional team within a company, within an organization itself. So I will just go through because I'm aware that the, the time is also, uh, uh, we have, uh, I've taken some time. So I'll just go through to finish up uh, all my slides. So as usual, if you have any questions you'd like to ask me, you can always ask me while I'm talking or you can ask me at the end uh, as well, okay? So the next, of course, the next point is, of course, looking at the workforce when it comes to consumer services. When it comes to your own workforce, ensure effective communication with employees. Remember what I, I mentioned earlier that employees were basically, they were either jumping to other companies, they were either being um, not so efficient as, as before due to this COVID-19, this pandemic. So these types of issues somehow seem to happen in, 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 much, in, in a much larger uh, impact these days during the COVID-19 pandemic as compared to previously. So the workforce itself has to be effective. Ensure a positive, effective communication with your own employees. Make sure that your leaders behave well during critical moments that somehow show your employees that these leaders care about the employees themselves, okay? Ensure communication, ensure interaction to be, to be done quite effectively. Okay, ensure that you are aware that this pandemic is not here for the long term. So you need to think of the future, okay? When there is a disruption in the workforce, there will also be a recovery soon. So the last thing you want to do as a business entity is to lose your, 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 your employees during this time and you have to go through the entire tiring process of basically rehiring new people or rehiring new employees. So that is what I'm trying to say. When you are looking at the empowerment or ensuring that the impact of COVID-19 is reduced in your own employees, ensure a positive communication is happening between the management as well as the employees of an organization. Okay, Leaders need to behave well, especially during these critical moments. So one part that I, I, would, I would talk about in, in relation to effective communication is, of course, supporting them, supporting their efforts. One, one major problem for consumer service is that call centers, previously when consumers had a problem, they just had to call, okay? 
call centers were very were very uh, effective but now they have to shift so people are working remotely so we have to change and accommodate these unusual circumstances make sure that your call representatives or your call center representatives are actually happy and they're actually taking you know they, they feel that they're taken care of so this would not impact the consumer service environment. This would not impact the, the consumer service excellence. And somehow this would still sustain the, the, the sales, you know, the sales capacity and, and, and basically not cause your profit to be, you know, to be disrupted. It will still cause the, 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 the profit that you're having to still have uh, uh, not much of an impact by this pandemic. So we ensure that we support our team. We ensure that our, our employees are actually taken care of. So that is why we look into the employees to ensure that profit is, you know, profit is somehow uh, enhanced during the pandemic. Two more minutes, uh, Dr. Anas. Two more minutes, is it? Sorry, Dr. Gansa, two more minutes? Yes. Okay, okay. So I will, I will just wrap this up now. Um, so another thing that we need to think of is, of course, workplace. Ensure that, I think most of us are aware of this, companies should ensure that the safety of working environments um, are basically taken care of. We know that our own, uh, you know, our own employees are basically, um, uh, they are scared to come back to work. They are actually trying their best to, to, to think of their own health. So ensure that they know that basically they are taken care of. Ensure that they know that their working environment is clean and they will be protected from the pandemic or protected from the, the, the virus itself. Okay, so ensure that you are having an update in your policies. Make sure that any sort of policies that includes face-to-face -face type of interaction is actually, you know, uh, uh, somehow minimized. So try to look at limiting travel. Try to look at ensuring that these employees are able to work effectively from their home. From their from their houses and and try to remember that these employees are not working for the sole event of increasing your profit, but they are also working because they are also taking care of themselves. Okay, so these are human beings that you're talking about, and we must always show that we are able to take care of them when we are when we're going through this pandemic, so that our consumer service or their customer service element would be not so impacted. Okay. Um, Dr. Gansa, I think I will uh, stop here uh, because uh, I think yes, I've taken quite some time. Uh, so uh, thank you so much for, for, for letting me know. So <laughs> <laughs> any, any questions, uh, if anyone would like to ask, please do ask me now. Okay, thank you, uh, thank you. Dr. Ganesh. It's very interesting how we uh, should conduct a good service to our customer especially during pandemic because it's difficult to maintain a good quality of service while the employee having problem for themselves during pandemic they feel sorrow they they feel pain they feel sickness but they still have to make a good service to the customer but i think that the good things that we have to remember that business cannot live without customer uh, we have uh, there is a song that fit with that, that uh, in Indonesia, we have song Tanpamu, Without You. Tanpamu apa artinya, tanpamu terasa hampa. Without customer, business is nothing. So we need our customer, so do our best thing to help customer to enjoy the experience with uh, our business. Okay, yeah. Balkis. Uh, you raise your hand, so I bet uh, you have something interesting for us to discuss. Please. Okay, please, Thank Balkis. you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Gancha. Uh, on, and also thank you very much uh, for uh, Mr. Kenneth Raj for uh, the presentation uh, and the information that uh, you have delivered. It's very interesting uh, talking about the customer service quality, especially uh, in the pandemic uh, where uh, the, uh, a lot of uh, the business aspects uh, have uh, encountered a transition uh, from uh, the offline uh, to the online. Uh, what, uh, I have uh, two questions, uh, actually. Uh, the first one is uh, related to the customer service. Uh, during the pandemic, uh, we actually uh, encounter a transition. And I think that uh, what I see is that not every business uh, always uh, 
uh, can adapt so quickly uh, to the uh, to the online form of uh, customer service and they need some time to actually adapt uh, and learn uh, on how to uh, deliver a good uh, a good online uh, customer service and uh, maybe some of them has uh, failed uh, at the first try and uh, what I want to ask is uh, there uh, with this business that uh, actually encountered a, a service a customer service failure uh, because of the transition of the pandemic uh, what can they do uh, to, uh, to to fix uh, their customer service quality uh, uh, after that because uh, what you were uh, explaining is that how customer service call uh, how bad a uh, bad serv customer service uh, quality uh, can uh, make uh, the customers uh, go, uh, but uh, with the transition of uh, the offline to online uh, pandemic, there's uh, there's a hard uh, moment where they need to uh, transist, and not everyone can uh, success in the first try. Yeah, so when this business uh, in this transition uh, they experience a uh, customer service failure, what can they do uh, to fix it? And uh, the second question uh, is related to how business deliver their customer service. Uh, there's, uh, we, we know that there's a lot of, uh, there's various uh, business that uh, uh, they, uh, they have different uh, customer seg segments, they have uh, different markets, uh, how to ensure that uh, the, the customer service uh, that they deliver is, uh, is the best one and uh, the one that is actually suitable uh, for the market uh, that uh, they target. Uh, uh, maybe that's all. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Barkis. So the first question is about uh, service failure, what we have to do after we conducting some service failure and then uh, how to make fitness with different segmentation, something like that. Yeah. Okay, please, okay. Dr. Kanes. Okay, um, thank you, uh, Dr. Gansa, and thank you, Barkis. So I just uh, would just share on uh, basically what I understood on your question was how the offline to online transition is happening and how will it be related to the various segments okay uh how because as one thing that happened when COVID-19 basically hit the organizations was that the good companies survived companies that were already embracing technology and uh, the online social media environment they survived so these companies such as McDonald's uh, the the F&B companies and even most of the major companies they actually did not have that much of an impact. But from this, from the, from the point of view of the companies, the organizations. So one way on how they could um, fasten their, their, their transition was that they immediately invested. They froze all their, their assets or all their, their financial uh, units that were basically, that were previously directed towards face-to-face -to -face interactions and all of that. They froze it and they directed it towards online uh, or technological advancements. So you, st you started seeing companies like um, uh, e-commerce companies started to prop up. Uh, social commerce organizations started to just, you know, uh, uh, sprout out from nowhere. Um, uh, organizations such as Tesco, uh, Marks and Spencers, these are, these are grocery uh, places, Village Grocer, over here we have Tesco, and all these places from a face-to-face -face environment, suddenly they had um, units that were basically, uh, uh, you know, helping consumers get their groceries. So from a point of view of the organization, they quickly went and, you know, they, 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 they acted on the problem fast. But when dealing to the segments, again, if I, if I understand your question Kev, uh, correctly, when dealing to the segments of the consumers, we have um, a, a, a variety of uh, different segments of consumers. Some, some segments uh, of consumers are, some consumers are economically well-to-do. They have the internet, they have the, compu you know, the computers and, the, and their, their iPhones and things like that. These consumers will be able to to have a a breeze, to have a good way, in, you know, a, a good um, a fast method in ensuring that there is some, uh, you know, they are able to buy the products. But what about those people who are living in the villages and things like that? So this was where the organizations had to basically liaise with the with the government. Okay, over here in, in Malaysia, what we did was we basically the government immediately targeted all these uh, this crucial this crucial. Uh, like medical services and food services and all these uh, business entities. And we ensured that we are making sure that these uh, not so um, segments that are not so lucky, like uh, the, the, the segments in the lower socioeconomic background, like the poorer people are actually taught how to use technology to, to make their, their bookings. And basically to a certain sense, our government actually gave out free tablets and free, free handphones to the, the villagers so that they can actually make their purchases. 
So these were some proactive things that were taken to reach out to the segments. Okay, um, and the second question, I, I, I couldn't quite get it earlier. Could you please uh, help me repeat it again, uh, Bakis? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Kanish Raj. Uh, I believe that the answer is for my second question. Oh, oh okay, <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, uh, okay. for the first one is uh, about a service failure. If they already encounter a service failure, that, okay. uh, what can they do to uh, fix uh, that problem? Okay. Because when they do the service failure, uh, it might be a bad publicity. And uh, we also have cancel culture going on right now. Yes, uh, yes. It's spread to the social media and stuff. So uh, what can uh, this company do to uh, maybe fix it? Okay, um, for the uh, service failure, um, even prior to the pandemic, uh, service failure is something that is extremely important in the service quality environment. The moment there's a service failure, there's a time limit. How fast are the organizations going to deal with that service failure before the service failure becomes catastrophic? Meaning that before it becomes so damaging that the, 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 the customer starts not being loyal anymore. So uh, one thing that organizations uh, did during the pandemic, I think most of us are aware of it, they started hiring these people known as influencers. Influencers began to be uh, monetized. You see that uh, young people, people uh, uh, in their teenage, you know, teenagers, people who are young, celebrities, suddenly had, were approached by business units. They had approached these, these, these types of people, the influencers, and they asked them to go and, you know, be connected to their, to their companies. When, um, uh, Again, back, back, back on your question, there was one uh, incident that happened with uh, Subway. I'm not sure if you remember, but during the beginning of the pandemic, Subway had a, had a major uh, service failure. And uh, what Subway did was many people were actually, um, uh, they were having, as what you mentioned, the cancel culture. They did not want to go to Subway and things like that. But Subway kept, you know, they, 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 they lay low for a certain amount of time. And what they did was they started going and uh, getting celebrities, K-pop, uh, you know, K-pop bands and things like that to go and be connected with them so that their their brand is you know is basically popular. And at the end of the day, we are just playing on the emotions of the consumers. Consumers are still human beings, and they are easy to basically convince. And consumers have a memory span that is actually quite short when it comes to brands. So if they are smart enough to engage with the consumers with the current trends and the current you know influences and things like that, the service failure can basically become a service recovery itself. So they playing hard target, and when you far away from us, so you will feel lost. So you, yeah, so you yeah. will feel bad. So yeah. please stay away with us. Something like that. Yeah, 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 something like that. Yes, yes, true. Okay, is there anything else, Balkis? Uh, yeah, it's clear. I think it's, yeah, okay, it's clear, thank, yeah. you, thank you, Thank you very much. You already got home right now. Uh, before. Uh, this session, I think you are at the campus. Uh, yes, okay. I was at the library actually. Oh, okay. Yes. okay, is there any question from audience, please? Maybe you are the customer who feel, uh, who experience the service failure, or or maybe you have a small business enterprises that uh, maybe you want to know how to make a good kind of a good type of uh, customer service. Please, you may join with us. Okay, Dr. Ganesh, while we wait for other question, I think uh, when you mention about service as competitive advantage, it must be challenging because sometimes a service can be copied by other, right? If, uh, the, uh, the, our uh, competitor can see, can watch, can experience, can observe about our service to our customer, and they can do and they can copying uh, our yeah. service. So uh, it will be very challenging to make it as a competitive advantage. Uh, so how? Uh, is there any tips how to make our service become our competitive advantage? Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Gansa. Uh, one of the, uh, I, I believe that it has something, uh, as what you mentioned, it has something to do with how our service, um, our service, basically our service efforts are basically being copied by others. Yes. Right. 
Yeah, so I think um, uh, based on what we have seen during the pandemic, many uh, many organizations, they were actually very sensitive or very, very, very consumer conscious. They were very internet savvy. We've, we found that um, among most of those people that were hired by the organizations were actually young people. We found people who are very tech savvy. Suddenly we have actually now, uh, even in America, in Google and companies like in uh, Microsoft, they have this, they have this, position known as um, influencer marketers. And these influencer marketers are actually marketers like, you know what it was previously, simple people who are dealing with marketing, but they are focused on influencing the consumers using social media. So now what is going on like over here um, in Malaysia is that we, I see companies are grabbing celebrities. So when they grab a celebrity, a famous celebrity, they automatically have an MOU, a memorandum of understanding. And the MOU basically, tells that this celebrity is with this company. So in, in that way, what, this is one of, the, one of the, 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 the things that I saw, one of the things, one of the efforts that I see that is basically um, ensuring that their style is not copied by another company. Okay, but I think that um, there are a lot of uh, currently uh, legal, you know, legal um, documents that are taken out to protect their, you know, their entity. And I also noticed that there are a lot of legal actions taken towards the uh, the, the other companies that are competing that are basically copying, sorry, copying uh, the efforts of uh, yeah. service quality. So yeah. the important thing, we have to legalize our yeah. uh, service uh, yeah. so yeah. the other cannot copy any of that. And yeah. then we should uh, share to the media uh, yeah. broadly, widely. So we have to make sure that people, customer know that we are the first one who do that service, right? Yes, yes. Uh, as uh, in the marketing area, uh, it's very important when we conducted uh, first mover advantage. Yeah. When we do mo uh, first mover advantage, so we will have uh, memorized by the customer. So I think it's very important to share it to the media, share it to the social media, to make sure that people know that we are the first one who do the service. Uh, that already exists. Maybe True. inviting in, uh, influencer. Even that the other, we already have contract with with BTS, but mm -hmm. our competitor have contract with Blackpink. But yeah. people yeah. already know that we are the first one who make uh, right. a, a, a contract with uh, Idol, a Korean Idol, something like that. Correct. Right. Correct. Okay. Correct. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, is there anything else for audience? So I think we have a very interesting topic that during pandemic, we have transformation for, self, uh, to, for giving service to our customer because suddenly we have to move our uh, service into online area. We cannot face-to-face uh, -face, uh, service, uh, giving service to our customer. So how to make the service become online is very, very challenging. Yeah. And then uh, people or competitor can make copy for our, uh, our service also. So how to make sure that it has intellectual property, it has contract, and then you have to make sure that you already share the information globally, widely to your customer. So they, they know that you are the first one uh, as the first mover advantage. Yes, true. Yes, true. And uh, the important thing, something that you already mentioned also, is about before we trying to make uh, our competitor, uh, our customer happy and satisfied, we have to make our employee happy and satisfied also because yes. they are the one who will uh, make contact with our customer. So the first one, uh, apa, we have to make our employee happy. So they will uh, give their service, their give uh, performance to our customer. So it's very important to empowering our employees to give their 
excellent, uh, excellent service to our customer. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Kanes Kopal, for your insight, inspiration, information to our audience. Thank uh, you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Dr. Gansa. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gansa. Yes. And, uh, hopefully that for having me. Continuing our collaboration. And yes. this is uh, for uh, remind you about us that we have Thank certificate you. for your presentation. Uh, hopefully you. that you always remember us and uh, support us for sure. a better position for QS ranking. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Sure, definitely. Thank you. Dr. Thank Ganesh. you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for having me. Okay, take care, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Take care. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. Thank you take for care. all of the audience uh, for your participation, uh, Balkis especially. Uh, you are very active to our uh, webinar series, our guest lecturing series, especially with uh, Tunku Abdurrahman University uh, that uh, their two best lecturer already join with us to share information about uh, something that uh, very, very important in management area, which is about product development and about how to make our customer happy. Thank you Please so much. And, uh, join with us again in our next webinar series for our audience. Terima kasih. Dr. Terima kasih. Thank you. Thank you. Terima kasih. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Terima kasih. Thank you. 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 Thank